Hello. I am here to talk about 90-10 grading. 90-10 grading is a paradigm shift in the way we calculate grades. You see, we have no idea what a grade actually represents. Because we need to find ways of inflating grades and improving test scores, we built some feel-good aspects into the plan. Let me introduce to you two students who can tell you about their experiences retaking tests. I like knowing that I don't have to stress over taking a test. I can go home and kick it with my friends now. I like it because I can spend more time at practicing my chairs. Like, since I like know we can fail the task the first time around and just retake it later. Granted kids don't get second chances on tests in college, but we'll let them find that out on their own. Did I hear them correctly? This policy supports laziness and procrastination? Do you have any data that shows students learn better under this plan? No. We have made a lot of assumptions but we have no data. Let me get this straight. We test piloted the program. And now we are going to implement it district-wide. But we have no data to support it? That is correct. But I do want to point out that other school districts are also using 9010 now. How many school districts are using 9010? If you added them all up across the country there is a total of um, um, three. Only three school districts in the entire country think this is a good idea? Um, yes. But I do want to point out that Los Angeles is one of those school districts implementing 9010. Los Angeles? If Los Angeles is doing it shouldn't we consider that a warning not to do it? Well, actually. Los Angeles stopped doing it because they forgot to get input from the community. How many community meetings did we have on 9010 grading? We had several committee meetings with a select group of people. But, if you're asking about public meetings where parents can give their input, we had none. Giving students second chances to achieve higher grades hurts everyone. It hurts the student, it hurts other students who actually earned their good grade the first time around. It hurts the reputation of the school, and it hurts colleges and employers who accept students that on paper have identical scores, but in reality one has grades that have been artificially inflated because they retook tests. Due to state testing, teachers are forced to present new content at an incredible speed. Although individualized education is supposed to be taking place in each classroom, it rarely can be, given student-teacher ratios. How will my child feel when he earned his GPA through the development of good study habits while someone else earned the exact same GPA but became complacent because they knew they could take every test twice? Now imagine yourself with that same person in a job interview or competing for a scholarship. You both look the same on paper but the person who has to take every test twice gets selected over you. Doesn't feel too good does it? I do see how this system, when implemented may cause laziness and procrastination. But, please understand that with test retaking we can tell parents their B, student is now an A, student. Here's a news flash for you. It's okay, even good at times, to fail. Failure teaches us that we should work harder or try something else. Grade inflation has become so rampant in education that one's grades are no longer reliable predictors of future performance. You are setting these kids up for failure. Whatever happened to a student's grade being based on learning so that it accurately represents what a student knows and is able to do, all grade inflation does is help get kids into college. That's not what we are about. Instead we should be preparing them for college. It is policies like 9010 that are the reason why so many students enter college only to find out they have to take remedial math and English classes first. Do teachers support this plan? Publicly, yes they do. Privately, well that's another story. At the very least you can guarantee that 9010 will bring consistency in the classrooms as it was designed to do, right? Yes. Well except for the teachers we told can do 80-20 or 70-30 instead. Wait. It is called 90-10 but some teachers are allowed to grade on an 80-20 or 70-30 system. 
How does that bring consistency between classrooms and teachers? Listen, I'm going to be completely honest with you. We know it has problems. It is especially bad news for kids that don't test well, but the 90-10 policy places less emphasis on formative assessments and compliance, like homework and class projects, and more on the end result, summative assessments, and passing tests. In the real world, the concept of tests just doesn't exist. It's the day-to-day -day work, participation in meetings and a general go-getter attitude that makes or breaks a person's career. This policy does not encourage these concepts. Instead we are back to students testing well but not necessarily understanding the material. Students can skate by and no one will be the wiser. Thank you for expressing your concerns. I encourage you to talk with your school board if you don't like the 90-10 system.